Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Solaris with me, Alathrix. And of course, welcome to what very well may be the last of the full playthroughs until the game updates, or until I start using mods. Today, we are going to be a little bit more tryhard than usual. Not really going with the standard role-playing, which I normally do with these playthroughs. We are going to try our very best to be as strong as we can, as fast as we can, versus the maximum strength crisis on its very earliest settings. So today, we are playing as the Galactic Lathrixian Empire. This is an illuminated autocracy. It is a fanatic materialist and an authoritarian empire. This way we can combine lots and lots and lots of tech with very cheap populations who give even more output. In fact, originally I was going to have this as fanatic authoritarian, but instead I really want to try out technocracy, which I have not used in quite some time, and it is a very, very powerful civic. Essentially, this allows us to have our science directors and our science researchers give unity, in addition to their research, and because we're going to be rushing lots and lots of scientists, this means lots of unity without having to waste buildings and jobs on unity jobs, though we might need to do that just to get the extra unity, as we do want a lot of the Ascension perks early as well, but either way, this helps to that end. On top of this, we have the guilds, which is a very, very powerful civic. This allows 40% of our population to be owned. These owned populations can still do all the specialist jobs, they just can't be rulers, and all of them get plus 10% to their output whilst costing no consumer goods outside of the job they're working, so no upkeep of consumer goods. This makes them really cheap, since 40% of the population are no longer consuming the very expensive stuff. Which is good, and because we are regular authoritarian, they do also give plus 5% output, since owned populations always go with worker output modifiers, not specialist, even if they are working specialist jobs. At least, that's how it seems. Either way, really powerful populations, loads of tech, and of course we are starting on a ring world, which I forgot to name. I think that's a fairly fitting name for our final world. So, what exactly do we have for the traits of our species, the Lathrixians. Well, they are rapid breeders and they are intelligent, they are solitary and they are sedentary. These two do absolutely nothing when we're on the ring world. Absolutely no negatives there. I was tempted to go with unruly and then have some other bonus. In fact, I'm still really tempted to do that because uh, maybe sedentary is a little bit more impactful than solitary. Maybe. Either way, they'll be changed later on as soon as we get genetics, which should be quite quick. So now that we have repugnant, not repugnant, now that we have unruly, we could go with something like strong. Remember, worker output, that will affect specialist jobs for our own populations. Extra unity from jobs, or maybe even just natural engineers, since I do want to get all of the tech up and running nice and quickly. This also apparently, um, the natural scientists apparently make your populations naturally more materialist. I didn't know that until I recently started looking at the factions, so more materialists, more, more uh, influence, as I lose the ability to think there for a second. Maybe like that. Now, intelligence, I am also tempted to change for something else, just because uh, other things are a bit better earlier on, but I feel like this is what we're going to go with. Conservationist, also very powerful, but yeah, for now, we'll keep it like this. We'll be changing them through genetics soon enough anyway, so it doesn't really matter all that much. The origin of course, is the ring world, as mentioned before. This is because you can get an insane amount of researchers from this. You can get an insane amount of early economy if we're under threat. It's just one of, if not the most powerful origins. I was also tempted by Mechanist. If we go with Mechanist, we instantly start building populations. That is actually incredibly powerful, as it does increase the pop growth early on so much that you can outpace a lot of other empires. I was also tempted by Scion, because Scion has the potential of giving you an entire army to begin with and then you can crush everyone around you. But not always, apparently. Although, if to my views, I've got it, apparently you don't always get the fleet. Sometimes you can get scientists and other stuff. Still very powerful, but yeah. We are going to stick with the ring world, I think. Maybe mechanist. Maybe the ring world. Maybe mechanist. No, we'll stick with the ring mechanist. You know what? We're going to be stupid. So straight away, me talking about min-maxing, and I'm probably going with a non-min-max option here. We are going with mechanist. So with mechanist... The one thing which got me here, just because I think it's going to be fun to see, is the robot upkeep minus 5%. And we are going to try and be synths, because I've not been synthetics for quite a while. Main problem with synths is that this increases the odds of the contingency. And also some people would say it's not the best of the ascensions, psychic, genetic, and synthetic. But I just really love it. It's the one I also play the best, which is a big deal. So if I'm going to try and min-max, the one I just do better with is also an option. So we're going all out 
with our materialist nature. Okay, yep, the end game, mid game, the earliest we can possibly give them, difficulty is on highest, AI aggressiveness is on high, and we're going. Now, of course, this isn't the impossible challenge, so not everything is set to max, like the advanced starts and AI empires, because I just don't find that fun. To be perfectly honest, this is already enough of a challenge, and I just want to see how powerful we can make this empire. Greetings, one and all, from the future. It is I, Future Lathrix, just here very briefly to say this video was really weird to edit. Lots of silence, lots of me just micromanaging everything. It ended up being just over 60 hours of footage, which I've tried my best to narrow down to a one-hour play session that is from when the game itself actually starts. I think I've gone just over it by the looks of things, but it was loads of fun. But I do want to say, if you do enjoy these type of videos, then likes and comments really do help out, since these videos videos are poison for YouTube's algorithm. It really, really hates them. It could do all sorts of bad things to the channel. So if you like them, a little bit of support really does help out and shows that you're interested in more in the future. I love making them. And now, hopefully you enjoy the more heavily edited version of Lathrix mostly being in silence, micromanaging. But I guess you get to hear past Lathrix actually talk. I had to sit through so much silence. So I may have ended up changing my mind. We are going to be using the Ring World. As much as I love the idea of Mechanist, just because it fits the Empire so well, the Ring World is just so incredibly powerful. The early districts are just insane. Loads of all of our economy, loads of research. I mean, the fact that we get five merchants from this, so our clerks basically just jump to merchants, giving us loads more trade value and everything else. And then we have almost unlimited housing and un unlimited research. It's just too powerful. And right now I do want to see just how strong this Empire can get. So, of course, we're going to be doing all the usual stuff. I've decided during this video I'm probably going to skip more than I usually do when it comes to editing it, just because we have seen all this before a lot of times, and honestly, I just want to see the power level of this empire. We've been through this, for instance. I've just downgraded our corvettes, so we have a nice lump of alloys to begin with, and apparently we're right next to these fellas. So that's a pretty nice start. You can offer us... Whoa. That would be great if we had any crystals. Oh, actually, we could get some crystals. That's 2,000 alloys. So crystals, we can get as soon as we have 500 energy. So tell us about that later. Ah, uh, might be a bit too long. The energy can remove one of the planetary features, which then give us crystals. But yeah, that's probably not going to happen for quite some time. Oh, that's great as well. Okay, come back later. We'll probably not get either of those. It'll just take too long. A tiny while later, we're already building our commercial segment, so I'm not going for anything too risky. I'm going for reliable. Hence the commercial segment first. I'm going with expansion, where I could have gone with discovery. I just want to make sure that by the time the endgame crisis arrives, we have habitats, we have lots of them, and we're on the way to becoming just insane. Okay, good, that's not another scientist. I don't really want to find another empire for quite some time, since I want to expand drastically. Now, we could have rushed the research segment, we could have even gone with Discovery first, which really isn't a bad option. 10% research speed and all of these things with the, um, the edicts and everything, that can be incredibly good, even this early on. In fact, especially this early on in some cases. But I want Discovery, since I don't want to expand as fast as possible. I want as many worlds as possible, so we can very quickly start supporting the Ring World and make the Ring World our main science hub. Construction project okay, concluded. this is coming up in just a few more seconds. Lovely. And that is loads and loads of economy. Now, once Anomaly it updates at the end of the month, we'll see how much trade value we're getting. Well, how much energy we're getting. There we go. Look at that. Fantastic. Way too many consumer goods, though. So the idea is now we'll save it for the research segments and then we can micromanage and balance everything so that we're still getting loads of resource to expand whilst having the ability to go ahead, you know what, I'm going to go down there and get all of our tech early. Now originally I was actually tempted to go with the Machine Empire, the main strength of the Machine Empire of course being 100% habitability on all worlds. And what I wanted to do was a Machine Empire, probably the Rogue Servitors, and messing with all the bonuses that the Bio Trophies can give, because it can be utterly insane, increasing stability of the planet, where normally that doesn't work because there's no happiness from machines, but they're happy. The point is, the big strength is habitability, and I think I've got very lucky here, because I haven't gone with machines, but there are lots of habitable worlds. And only a few, which are completely worthless to us, which I'll still send colony ships in order to get a, f a few free extra populations. So I'm System happy with my choice right now. 
Machine Empire was a very close second. Maybe it is better than this empire in lots of ways, but I just wanted to play this empire. Ooh, and an ocean world. Yep, getting very lucky with the world. So there it is, a population with any natural scientist trait. And of course, we have the natural engineer trait, so we're going to get more materialists, and materialists should be happy as we continue. In fact, both of these factions should be very easy to please, so really happy with those two. We have uplifted a species within our empire, thus giving us loads of extra influence. I've also managed to find a primitive species. We have conquered them. And now they are one with our lovely, lovely empire. We are completely surrounded by neighbours, quite annoyingly, so our expansion is going to be halted very, very soon. But on the upside, I did manage to hit quite a few worlds. So, a lovely start, if a bit short. So, I might end up being aggressive to one of these two over here, the Unity and the Regime. Although the Regime is actually materialist, they just don't like us for some reason. They really don't want to like us. However, the subversive cult, the spiritualist xenophobes, do like us. And thankfully, so does the Empire over here, the mega corporation, the ruthless capitalists. So we have the capitalists and a cult who like us, and the hive mind and the... What are you anyway? Yeah, you, you are a military dictatorship. Do not like us as much. Thankfully, not super aggressive, though. I can probably keep them from attacking me by sending my envoy to one, then the other, then the other, and just trying to keep the peace that way, along with a few bribes. We can upgrade our government, and there are multiple options I want here. I want police state, I want environmentalist, I kind of want efficient bureaucracy for once, just because I hate the admin cap in this game, and right now I'm just trying to get it back under control. I have two worlds now which are soon to turn into bureaucracy worlds. And I also kind of want... Where are you? There we are, functional architecture, just because we have ring worlds and gonna have loads of them in the future. This is essentially what you get from prosperity later on as well. But I think I am going to go with the diplomatic one. Now, normally I'll go with police states, giving us more stability on all of our planets, thus more resources. But right now, what I really want to do is make sure that we definitely don't end up going to war. Right now, these two are kind of getting closer and closer to warring with us, and I do not want that. So this way, we can send two of you to quickly quell the tide over there. We have one over there already trying to make you like us more. These two really like us. This one over here loves us. Let's see if we can continue to be the bestest friends to everyone. Well, I've managed to get these three empires to like me through consistent bribery and loads of envoys, so huzzah for that. Definitely worth all the effort. Only the Unity doesn't like me very much, but it's not going to hurt me either. We already have border friction. It's not turning hostile. It's going to be just fine. Now, finally, I am also converting my entire empire into uh, cyborgs, increasing their habitability System and their lifespan. Concluded. Not much more than that. Research the leaders concluded. get some weak bonuses, and that's pretty much it. It's one of the reasons why I personally think the biological... Ascension tree might be a bit better because you get clone vats straight away, which is an insane amount of extra pop uh, population growth, and you get that very early. Really stumbling over my words more than usual today. It's been a weird day. Now, what we do need is some alloy worlds. As you can see, I am really struggling for alloys because every single world I'm getting, I am putting down robot assembly plants, which now cost alloys to produce machines. The year is 2245, and things are going weirdly good in most ways, but in my last test run, at this point, I was at about 2.6k research. Instead, I'm at 1.6k, so I'm a full 1,000 research behind, but everything else is going better. I have more worlds, I have a much better economy, and even our alloy production is actually pretty good. The only reason why it looks a little bit low is just because every single world has a robot assembly plant. The robot assembly plants consume two alloys per month in order to produce our lovely, lovely robots. So yeah, that's a lot of alloys being consumed considering we have so many worlds, or alloys if I can speak. So the Federation is going strong, we have the Regime, despite the fact they hated us, they kind of swapped and now absolutely love us and they were our first member. We have the Industries over here with Association status, they'll join us as soon as the Regime will allow it. And then we have these fellows doing the same. Oh, actually, apparently that swapped over, so being in an association with them will slowly build trust, and apparently that's enough for us to get them already. So, can we buy some favours so we can just about get you to join us? 
Do you like food? You apparently don't like food. That's good. How about energy? Do you like energy? Of course you like energy. Energy is money. How about volatile moats? Okay, so we get quite a few. But not quite enough. Okay, how about consumer goods? I would like to get the maximum since I do also want to have these favours for later on when I'm making choices for the Federation. You can bribe them and use these favours later. Okay, there we are. So now you can join Federation. All we need to do is send over an envoy. Just throw that one over. Research concluded. And there we go. One more member in the Federation through the power of bribery. Commencing. Look at that. Lovely. Really, really solid Federation. Whoa, you have a lot of amoebas in your territory. Oh, have you pacified them? Another that explains day. that. Okay. Another scientific breakthrough. Lovely. So later on, of course, what we want is a decent fleet contribution. We want it so it's challenge or strongest, so I can stay in control. But this is all going to be in the distant future. Sadly, the Fellowship will never join us because they are a subversive cult. And thus just can't join federations. And the hive mind isn't particularly beloved by the regime. Maybe one day if they become friends we can get the hive mind as well, which would be amazing. So most likely I will end up going to war with the Fellowship in the future once I have a Colossus or just a decent fleet. But for now we're just sticking where we are. We have some really good choke points. We have one, two, three, four, and that there, that wormhole isn't even a concern because that just connects to here. Yeah, this is actually an amazing bit of territory. Loads of worlds, really good choke points, just not much actual territory. Well, something lovely here. We have Synth Leaders. Now, this is important because with Synth Leaders, we can go ahead and grab Synthetic Evolution as soon as I'm finished off with Diplomacy, which won't take that long. And then, we are all Synthetics. Now, of course, like I said, this does bring the ultimate risk of the Contingency, the most difficult of the three endgame crises, at least in my opinion. And that is absolutely terrifying because they could even spawn in a world in our territory. Yeah, it's kind of like the Unbidden. It's kind of random where it is, but with the Contingency, it's four separate worlds. The Unbidden does spawn in one location and the Scourge always along the edge of the galaxy. We are now Synthetics. Immortality has been granted to our people. And the automatic naming system has called them the High... Lathrixian superiors. <laughs> well, at least they're happy. That's the important thing there. So, the one thing I noticed which surprised me is my economy just exploded. Uh, it turns out the upkeep of our machines is incredibly low. One of the reasons, of course, being that we are a fanatic materialist, giving us minus 20% to our robot upkeep, and then there's other modifiers as well. That upkeep includes consumer goods. So our machines actually cost very, very little energy and almost no consumer goods to run, which is insanely good. Oh, and Lathrix the Derp never died, so yep, long reign the Emperor. Wait, why are you still the Caterpillar? Uh, the Caterpillar Shrimp Robot. Everyone else- okay, apparently I wanted to stay like that, so there we are. Eye for Talent, Warlike, and Industrialist. Okay. And of course, we're also synthetic, giving us all the extra bonuses. Lovely. Still a bit behind on tech than I was before, but now we can really, really ramp things up. I'm currently building two habitats. No, three habitats. Gonna start a fourth in a second. Once you're done with that. Actually, you know what? Let's make a new construction vessel now. So we're starting to already fortify our borders. These are where all of our fortresses are going to take place. We're going to be so difficult to break through. In addition to our synths, we are now also growing... Whoops, that is it. We are now also growing normal populations. All of them are being assimilated as soon as they grow. These are all from migration treaties, except for these fellows, the Xerites. Because the Xerites are very interesting. First of all, they're serviles, so they are always happy. Even when they're in a not particularly nice way of living. And they produce plus 10% resources from jobs, in addition to giving us gas, which is fantastic. They're also thrifty, so essentially these are going to be our clerks. They're going to live, they'll be clerks their entire life, producing, sorry, producing trade value and amenities, and producing gas passively in the background. Nice and easy to keep them around, and, well, I'd rather have one of these in this job than one of our synths. Every other organic 
They will be synthetic. They will be Lethrixian. They will be part of the collective. Except for not. Well, they're not really part of the collective because they can be affected by happiness. That's one of the pluses to having a synth race rather than the true machine empires. As you can see, even our owned populations are above 50% happiness. We are a really happy empire. That means the stability of our planets is insanely good. You can actually do something similar with that with the rogue servitors, since the rogue servitors also have the bio trophies which are able to be happy, thus giving stability to the planets. Now feel free to correct me if I'm wrong here, if I'm not fully understanding this, but the Federation I'm currently in has a really, really powerful way of working, and it is kind of bizarre. So this is the research cooperative, which is, believe it or not, all about research, and eventually we can even build more megastructures at once. But right now, the very first thing we get level 1 is this, Research Cooperative. And this basically means that we have research agreements with all members of the Federation. But that's not exactly how it seems to work. Rather than having the normal research agreement, so I have an, an agreement with the industries, I have an agreement with the regime, etc. It seems like we have one pooled agreement. And that normally wouldn't make a difference. It seems like it's the same thing, but if we go on over to our research here, this is my energy weapons damage repeatable. I'm on rank 2 right now. I am the only one who's got rank 1, and you may notice I'm getting the 30% bonus there at the bottom. Star Academy Association Research Sharing. The Star Academy Association being the Federation's name. I should have got if that was the name there. So I'm getting that plus 30% as if another empire has already researched this and the reason it seems to be is because it's a pooled research normally how it works is that if you have a research agreement with another empire for instance if i had one with the industries if the industries had already researched something and then i went to research it i would get a bonus and vice versa if i have already researched something and then they research it they get the bonus but this, because it's a pooled research, instead it looks to see if anyone in the Federation has already completed this repeatable. Then it sees that I have, I have completed rank 1, and then gives me the bonus, even though it's me. I've already researched it so I get the bonus, that's not how it normally works. And furthermore, it's going off rank 1, this is rank 2, it's giving me the bonus. That's a pretty big deal, because it means although I'm much further ahead than the others, I'm getting this 30% bonus as if I am in a research agreement with someone as far as me, or, or perhaps even further. Now, rank 1 of these does not give the same thing. If we have a look here, no plus 30%, but as soon as I get rank 2 of it... Also, why did I activate... Okay, that's the wrong one, I must have misclicked. Yeah, that was a mistake. There we go. So, yep, as you can see, really powerful to be in the Federation, because that's more powerful than a Science Nexus bonus. But again, if I am incorrect about exactly how that's working, feel free to tell me in the comments. I've not seen anyone say to the contrary, and that's just my understanding after looking at it for five seconds. I could be very, very wrong. The very first of the Arcology Project is now starting. I've gone with the Arcology Project for now, and I will also go for Master Builders and Galactic Wonders, leaving only one, which of course will be Defender of the Galaxy, though I might need that a bit earlier. We shall see. Come on, let me get that. Thank you. In order to further our goals, we're going process. to war, and we are going to be taking over the Fellowship into a Vassal. So eventually we'll integrate this and contain all of this section of the galaxy. I was going to do the same to the Unity, but our Federation decided to go to war just to conquer a few systems. Which is really annoying. This should be quite an easy win. I am basically equivalent to the enemy in fleet power. And then of course we have our allies as well, which are already moving in to help out. Seems like I underestimated the enemy. A lot of our ships Research have been destroyed complete. already, but... Yep, there's our allies finally making their way in. And our little corvette swarm here is doing just fine. To say this war was one-sided would be a drastic understatement. Our federation spans all of this territory, and so we are very powerful. However, I did have to divert loads of alloys towards it, so I ended up building the science nexus site... And then not being able to finish it off because I had to build battleships and all sorts of other things because I was just losing too many corvettes. 
Thankfully, though, we are now crushing them. Though I must give credit to my allies. Honestly, they have done way more than I have done because it seems like the enemy wanted to attack here and here way more than my territory, so our allies were constantly fighting them back and defending against them. Should be victorious soon, although it seems like one of our allies wants territory from them, so... I can always just status quo. That will take every world I've got so far. But I can wait. So, I just spent, like, a good, a good six minutes trying to figure out why I couldn't build ring worlds around my stars. I should be able to. They're completely reasonable to be built in this area. Then, I finally go to my tech, and da-da, I completely forgot to research it. I've researched every other megastructure, not the ring world. Also, as you can probably see right now, my empire is just... It's becoming utterly insane. We have 10k research. Now, I was a little bit higher than this in the test run, but well, there we are. Our alloy production is finally on the rise. Everything else is just about stable, and I'm still creating way, way more. At least two worlds are still undergoing the Arcology project. Oh, wait, no, no. One world is still undergoing the Arcology project, right? Right. Please prove that Lathrix isn't insane. There we go. I knew it was at least one. Sadly, influence is now becoming the main problem here. So, very soon, what I can do is activate Will to Power, although I'm still finishing off the final of the tradition trees. This seems to be the only thing the Empire was a bit slow with, getting all of the traditions. Though I have relied almost solely on my researchers. My lovely, lovely researchers. Thankfully, alloys right now are worth a fortune, so by selling them, there we go, there are, in fact, two worlds undergoing the Archaeology Project. It was like that the whole time, honestly. You're the one who's crazy, not Lathrix. Lathrix's smart. Lathrix can take care of his own empire. Lathrix hasn't been awake for the last ten hours just playing Stellaris. Lathrix's mind is still intact. The Federation continues to grow. All will eventually see that we are the true good guys of the galaxy. We are here bringing enlightenment to every last one of them. Through the cooperative. Sadly still in level 3 though, but yep, the director over here has just joined us willingly. Uh, the unity over here was mostly controlled, sorry, mostly taken by the regime, although now it has sworn loyalty to the commonality over here. Hello, commonality. They don't like us very much, but we don't really care. However, I don't particularly want to destroy them, since they supply most of the people for this unsavory market, which is really helping out our worlds. Over here, we have the commonwealth, which uh, we could probably make like us, honestly. I think it's more an issue, yeah, it's more an issue of they dislike other fellows we- No, actually, it's just me. Hmm. Yeah, you know, I think we could make you like us. Maybe in the future, though. Maybe in the future. Yeah, you're gonna be a problem. Still, overall, we are just absolutely dominating the galaxy now, which is exactly the point. As we continue to protect all of our borders, we have loads of habitats up now. I'm building a new ring world, finally, and we've at last finished up Harmony. Don't know why I did this one last for, really. It's actually really useful. So soon I can afford Will to Power, and with all that extra influence, we can start really doing things. Extra influence, and then we can also increase how many mega structures we can build. So we can build three at a time. Right now, we're going to build two. So we're going to have ring worlds absolutely everywhere. I need a matter decompressor. Right now our minerals are kind of hitting their limits. So I'm going to have to curb our alloy production for the time being. Yeah, just, we're a tiny little nation here. But at this rate, we're going to be able to weather anything. Research. And it's only the year 2301. Compare this to the worst empire run I did recently. <laughs> a little bit of a difference. Whoa, okay, the game just almost crashed then. So I have now integrated all of this empire, which means there's going to be a lot of populations being assimilated, which means for a while, all of my tech and all of my economy is going to be absolutely nothing. Wait, there's far less of you than expected. What happened? Oh, because the other empires took a lot of your population with them, didn't they? Yeah, that's what it is. Still, though, Lots more worlds. 
Send in the synths. I'm still going to, to continue to fortify here, though, because if a Scourge ends up being our, um, our crisis, they could just spawn here. So, I count all of this as potential fatalities, and I'm not even going to try and stop it, because that would be so insanely difficult. But until then, I will, of course, use this to my advantage. Almost got our economy back to normal now. We're still a little bit over our admin cap, which is actually a big deal at the moment since we are getting so much research. Any modifier is horrendous. Also, I am just floating Unity right now. I don't really care about these, but sure, yes, all of them. And you need to be converted soon as well. The Relic Worlds are normally what I convert last into the Archaeology Project. Still got two more on the way. Uh, we're building up the second ring world still, and the Dyson Spheres on its way as well. Honestly, I am scared of nothing now except for the contingency. The Unbidden and the Scourge, they are nothing. They'll hurt a lot, but we have so many habitats in the way. It's just going to take them such a long time to get through. Even if they spawn now, it's going to take them tens of years before they get to anywhere even slightly vulnerable, and by then, I'll have hard counted them, and my fleets will be in the thousands. Turns out I need to check things and double check things once in a while. Because there's the wormhole there and then this system, I always assumed they were connected, and I didn't even bother going there for the single world because there was so many other things to micromanage. Right now, I think I'm on hour 40 of recording this episode, so just putting into context how much there is to do in this game. Uh, for once, I am actually using my science vessels to assist research, for instance, everything else. But the point is, I'm trying to make, as I just meander off there, this wormhole actually goes over here. That's obviously a problem. So, what I'm going to need to do is fortify this system as well, which should be pretty easy. Uh, I can get one, two, three, four habitats here. I've just spent influence to start making a new archaeology project, but I will be now saving up and making sure this is safe as well. These three systems, in fact, no, all four of these systems, this one, this one, this one, this one, all have habitats on, making it probably the strongest corner of my empire. We are so insanely fortified. Turns out I was wrong, it's hour 30. Big difference. Time is a thing, apparently. So I've made a bit of a major blunder here. So right now, all of my machines have population controls enabled, except for the High Lathrixian Superiors. Because of that, I assumed only the High Lathrixian Superiors would be able to be built on the different planets, but it turns out the population controls do not work in the same way as with the regular populations, and so my worlds have been building just randomly any choice of all of these bots. Now, thankfully, most of these bots I've only recently got, from going to the market. So that, that's only happened over the last like three or four years, so I have hardly any of them. The problem is, it's not so much that these robots are bad because they're fine, slightly differently set up, which is actually a good thing to have some variety on the worlds. But if we do have the ghost signal, if we have the contingency, all synthetic populations, that is all populations which aren't the main species, which doesn't count towards this for some reason, will have negatives applied upon them. Things like, I think it's minus research speed and minus resources from certain jobs. So what you want is as many of the normal population as possible, none of these. Just in case you accidentally spawn in the contingency by being a synthetic empire. So there's the problem. I have almost equal amounts of these two across my worlds, which means the contingency will hit us harder than it otherwise would. Yep, see, population controls enabled. I really thought this wouldn't be created anymore. Well, I might as well do that because I'm not sure if it's actually affecting its happiness or not. Maybe it was. But now all of our worlds can only make the correct one, and thankfully, unlike normal populations, when you select one of these, you don't get the minus 20% growth speed, as you can see. It costs you 10% of the current progress when you swap, just for that one growth, but then after that, it's just normal growth speed. Yeah, something to know for the future. I simply did not know about that. I honestly thought the population growth worked in the same way for synths as it did for the organics. Clearly, very much a mistake. 
I don't know who's selling so many machines over on the market, but I am very glad they are. Just loads and loads of free workers for us. Just gonna throw them all onto our first ecology world. Ecology? Arcology world, there we are. Now, if we want to, we can really up how many alloys we're producing. Do I need to do that? Not really, but we will probably want that in the future. Another thing is, what I need to do now is really start to build the mega shipyard to increase the speed we can actually build said ships. Yeah, I think I've built enough habitats for now. Everything but the contingency I'm very, 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 very confident about. With the contingency, I don't know, because I don't know how powerful their bombardment stances are and their ground forces. You know, I was just looking at my empire and thinking, you know, we could be doing better than this. We're a little bit behind where I want to be. Then I realised it's only 2,322. It's just because the endgame crisis is so early, I'm thinking it's way later in the game than it actually is. Then I realised, oh, I'm actually doing pretty well. Speaking about people not doing well, though, I completely forgot the Grey Tempest were a thing, and apparently some of the smaller empires are kind of being crushed around the areas over here. Most of the Grey Tempest are actually beaten back finally, but it seems like there's still one or two fleets just attacking some areas. Though, yeah, this empire can more than defend itself. Will I bother going to the Elgate? The problem is there's no Elgates nearby for me, so claiming that territory is so expensive, I don't know if it's worth it. Oh, look! That's a special world, that is. What how expensive that would be for me to get. There's the wormhole connecting my territory to there. One, two, three, four. For a 25 Gaia world, though. Okay, get over there. We might go for it. It's very expensive, though, but a 25 Gaia world is still really good. Still, go over there, then you can return afterwards. Well, I'm really pushing for as much gas as possible, so our lovely gas world over here, the one with the feral behaviour event, which leads to the specialist gas plant engineers, is now producing 97 gas, and that's going to increase and increase and increase, since I'm going to make this world also undergo the Arcology Project, which will make our normal populations grow incredibly quickly as well. At the moment, there's loads of unemployment, because I have just been funneling more and more populations here. But because of all that extra gas, it means on almost every one of our worlds, I can just upgrade and upgrade and upgrade all of these research facilities. So now we're almost at 30k tech, so a very sharp increase in tech over the last five or so years, and that's going to just get more and more pronounced, especially since I'm finally finishing up building all the habitats so I can start building more ring worlds. That's why I'm a little bit behind where I want to be right now, because I have just focused so much on defense. We have habitats everywhere I can put them. It's going to be very difficult to break this empire. Well, we've got insanely lucky. Apparently, the enemy we're going to face is the Scourge. Now, I know we've seen the Scourge. We fought off so, so many times. But I'm happy to see it, because it just means we're going to utterly dominate. At this point, our fleets are almost 300k, our repeatables are incredibly quick, and now I know what we're against, we can focus purely on armour and energy weapons, with a little bit into strike craft, since they can counter the enemy strike craft when they attack them, so we don't get one shot by them. This is going to be a very, very easy end, and the Empire is just glorious. It's only 2,331, we have 35k research, we have loads of the Arcology Project, I am now building a new ring world over here, we have the Dyson Sphere almost completed, and we have the Mega Shipyard just now being finished. Wait for it, there we go. 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh, there's one level left, but still you get the point, we have the Mega Shipyard, it's almost finished. We are incredibly, incredibly powerful. So I think I've proven my point that this is definitely, if not the most powerful, then one of the more powerful. In fact, we, what we could do is change out technocracy now for something else, because I just don't need that unity. But we would lose the science directors and everything else, but yeah, there are some other options we could go with. So even though I didn't play particularly wide, and we could have become even more powerful, I think, yeah, as I just said, we've shown the power of this empire. So soon, we're going to see where the Scourge spawn. Even if they spawn here, remember we do have the habitats in this territory. We have loads of them there, so we can still hold them off. And now I know what I'm facing, we can start to hard counter them. 
Now, the reason why I said I got lucky, though, just to describe that, is because this could have been the contingency. The contingency can spawn anywhere. Now, apparently the worlds are already selected at the start of the game. I don't know how you find that out. I would like to know which worlds were selected just out of curiosity. I'm sure it's probably a way. If you know of a way, tell me in the comments. But the contingency could have just destroyed us if they had a world in our territory. Simple as that. If they bypassed all the habitats. But that's not that likely. We're not a particularly big empire. So as long as they didn't spawn directly inside, I still think we would have been okay. It would have been a lot harder, but I think it would have been okay. I've got to be honest though, I am a little bit sad that it's not going to be the contingency. Although it would have been the most difficult option, again, I'm fairly confident we could have dealt with them and what an awesome ending to this run, fighting the most difficult of the endgame crises as well. But sadly, they just took too long to spawn in. Every, um, I don't know how many years it is, but essentially every time the roll happens for the endgame crisis, the Scourge becomes more and more likely. Because that's the only modifier for the Scourge. How long has it been since the endgame crisis could have potentially spawned in? For the Scourge, sorry, for the Contingency, it's how many synths are in the galaxy, percentage-wise. So that should have been very likely. And then for the Unbidden, it's how many jump drives you have, the side jump drives acting as a uh, stronger modifier. Yeah, actually, I am upset it wasn't the Contingency. But, we continue for what we have. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> that just made me jump. Thankfully, all I said was, ooh, because I could have said something worse then, because that literally made me leap a little bit in my chair. I leapt back. <laughs> That's one of our habitats. So yeah, one of the non-upgraded ones, I think. Why did that make me jump? Oh, I'm getting sleep deprived. Okay, originally I planned this area to be sacrificial, but now we have this here. I've put down one habitat here, I'm using all my influence to put down two over here. In fact, I even stopped building a habitat over here to do so. And then I might build one here as well, or a couple, let's see. If oh yeah, this system's perfect for it, so that'll block off down here as well. This is the most fortified I've ever had a system, a um, empire. How many habitats do I have at this point? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, yeah, 27, and that's with two uplifts, which both gave over 500 inf influence each to spend on them. Yeah, we could add loads of other things, um, ring world stuff, more of the archaeology, the archaeological projects, archaeology projects, oh god, I need to have a break, this is my third recording session, it's now coming to an end, <laughs> and yeah, I'm just hoping to see the Scourge, and I'm probably gonna go and get some sleep. And finally, here come the Scourge. Oh, lovely, nice and far away, we have the Awakened Empire between us, we have our Federation mem uh, members between us, or mem buyers, as I was about to say then. That's the only threat. That wormhole there is going to be a bit of a problem. That's going to take ages. <laughs> the game is being far too kind. <laughs> Actually, that's a bit boringly kind. Um, <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, it's going to consume all of this since I'm still building up my fleets. I have one, two, three, four, five fleets almost ready. The uh, sixth is finally coming along, so we have about a million fleet power. That's just going to get stronger and stronger as I finish off all my tech. Do we move them out now and try to cut off some of the smaller fleets, or do we just wait until we're strong enough and then just bombard all the way through? Okay, if we go this way, I'll eventually get to this wormhole. So this is a threat, so is this. This side is completely safe, which is good, because what I can do now, then, is these habitats here... I can convert some of these fortresses into something else for tech, or actually a whole slew of things. So I expect my tech to jump again, or perhaps trade? More energy, more consumer goods, because currently that's how I'm getting most of my consumer goods through trade. Don't know. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. You know what, because it's going to take so long to get here, let's see if we can move. Oh wait, no I can't, because these fellows are blocking our entrance. Would you mind, ever so kindly, Opening up your doors. You're about to be eaten alive otherwise. And you probably don't want that. Just a guess. 
Apparently my early action has been cut completely short because these lovely fellows over here, the commonality, just closed their borders the second I entered this wormhole. So now my fleets have vanished for a few months. And they were my bigger fleets. Yep, I could have probably took out one of these smaller groups of Scourge since we are countering them, but uh, not now. Oh, and apparently these have closed their borders again as well. They opened them briefly. But nope, they would rather be eaten alive. And now they really are going to be. Okay, everyone, back. Let's make it cheaper so I have some more money to spend on making more things. Not much really to say, just over the last few years I've now upped my fleet power to about 2 million. We are now all completely countering the Scourge, every single last of the ships, all are fully armoured without any shields and are using energy weapons to cut through armour and hull. We will be attacking fairly soon since I don't want them to get too many worlds because we don't have the Colossus, which means taking out these worlds is going to be a slow and very annoying process. So getting them back before they're fully Scourged is actually pretty key at the moment. So we have our fleet over here ready to go. Don't really know why I built it over there, but I just did. You can just follow along one of these fleets. And very soon I'm going to head out just to start trying to pick off the smaller of their fleets and to invade the worlds. Whilst there's still a population being eaten on these worlds, they aren't infested. And thus you don't need to bombard them. Seems like there's already a few infested worlds though, which is a little bit on the annoying side. Yeah, mostly these smaller habitats. Being colonised by the Scourge, darn it. Why do you have empty habitats? Well, you just made my life more difficult. Really dislike you there, Dynasty. Really do. Our fleets are finally moving. I've built a gateway in our home system because there's a gateway over here and a gateway near the top over here so we can hijack our allies. So, I'm just going to move over here, get everything... Oh, thought there was only one fleet there. The plan still stands, I just have to be more Receiving cautious. I'm going to collect all my fleets, Research and we can complete. definitely destroy any of their single fleets, but I don't want to get caught by multiple. Really don't. Our very first fight versus the Scourge. Our strike craft should utterly obliterate theirs, which they're doing, lovely. So none of them reach us. And there are our Titans firing, followed by our battleships. They are getting way closer than I expected. Oh, yeah, because I have Corvettes in these fleets. Yeah, I'm going to lose all the Corvettes and such very quickly. However, we took very little damage despite that. No, I definitely lost some ships. And that's only saying I've had three in that fight. What just happened? I'm certain I lost ships. I saw them... Yeah, look. There is a dead ship. Will I get another report in a second? Oh, the fight's still ongoing, that's why. Okay. Oh, no. You were going the other way. Okay, they were definitely going the other way when I just checked. Research Behold the power of the swarm. Please fo uh, just focus on one thing for once. That would be fantastic of you. The thing is, the larger enemies are actually easier for us to kill. And it's because almost all their damage comes from their strike craft and missiles. They have almost no normal acid blasts. So we lost very, very little again then. Now, you're all following this one, which is the slowest of the group. Don't know why you're so far behind. Yeah, you're meant to be following, but you're moving very weirdly. Well. The Scourge are clearly nothing in comparison to us. I just got ambushed by three when I, was, when I thought I was attacking one. And there we go. Now I can see the actual list of things we've lost. We lost cruisers, corvettes, destroyers, as expected. We lost seven battleships, which is the biggest casualty. Oh god, we lost almost nothing. Yeah, we're gonna do just fine. And now there's no enemies nearby. Let's start clearing our way over here so we can try and save these Research worlds. Concluded. Ignoring their fleets, I'm just going straight after the worlds at the moment. Titans might not be that effective versus times 25 Scourge with their lasers, but it still looks amazing.
Yeah, I feel like I might need... Oh, that's what happened. Okay, our leader, the, the original slowest, managed to develop Scout at some point. Okay, you're following that one. You are our new leader. Well done. You've been promoted because you're rubbish. Research concluded. <laughs> it's a good promotion, being promoted for being competent. It's a bit like politics, really. Okay, you're about to attack, and that's a really large group. Um, okay, back off, everyone. Back off as far as you can. Okay, we go again. Whoa, that is bright. And down they go. How much did we lose? There's a large enemy fleet. Uh, did we lose any, any battleships at all? No. Ah, two! Darn you two! I mean, the honoured dead. Still gonna call you dum-dums, though. I would say to your face, but you know, you're dead. I remember someone asking me before, why is the Titan weapon really not all that good when it comes to the super endgame stuff? And it's purely because their main weapon here is not classed as an energy weapon, or kinetic or anything else. It has no classification. You see, normally they have type, so type energy. So if I go on over to my physics, I'm now increasing energy weapon damage. I'm also increasing strike craft damage, everything else. But because that has no type, it means I can't increase the fire rate and I can't increase the damage. So it rapidly becomes weaker than just the tachyon lances from our normal battleships. Oh, I accidentally gave you afterburners rather than... Whoops. Okay, that might explain some of the weird movements. Anyway, the point is, though, the titans are great. Their buff is fantastic. But because they are so weak in themselves and they do tend to get targeted first... It's debatable if they're worth it, although I love the plant one. I just think it looks so... I don't know. Alive. With all the windows and stuff, this thing's done really well, like it's an actual working ship. Okay, I'm just going to carry on through here. Seems like most of their attention is up here, which is Research great, so I'm just concluded. following them along. And I'll just stop to bombard planets as I get there, and hopefully I'll be able to rescue a lot of the planets as well. So annoyingly, the construction vessel did manage to make at least one thing. Thankfully, though, we do have two fleets ready. And they're going to go and deal with that. They're just going to be there to try and attack things like Research the construction concluded. vessel. And these fellows have finally accepted our protectorate offer. And they are instantly loyal. We are apparently good rulers. My reinforcements have arrived, so now we're doing even more damage than we were before, and as you can see... <laughs> oh, that was quick. Lovely. And of course, the repeatables continue to improve our fleet. Fantastic. Still going slow, though. They are expanding faster than we're taking back territory, but we are slowly getting there. Well, here we are, the first world we need to bombard to destroy, and we're in a fight over here. Oh, we spawned right next to them. That's not good for us. We're going to lose a bit because of that. Yeah, our advantage is range. I uh, didn't lose that much, but yeah, that could have been better. Easily could have been no losses. I thought they were a bit further away. Oh, very small system. Okay, yeah, they managed to jump past way faster than I expected. Okay, you're changing your mind. That's fine. In that case, we'll... Take the long route, and we'll take all of that. Some more fleets are on the way as well to reinforce, and they will start to bombard these planets. Currently can't get here since they are heavily defending their homeworld, so most likely this is going to be the last one we attack. Homeworld, their staging point, whatever you want to call it, but this is their capital, I suppose. That would be probably what you should call it. That's a lot of titans. I like titans. Okay, that looks really cool. The strike craft going from side to side there as they move in. Another day, another scientific break. Okay, we've got a world to save. Where are our ground forces? Where are our ground forces? I had them just a moment ago. 
Oh, unless I was caught off guard, I was saving another planet. Okay, I think I may have let the ground forces just wander into a fleet. Yep, looks like I have. Okay, well, thankfully... It doesn't take all that much fleet power to actually take one of these worlds. In fact, it takes the bare minimum. So as long as this world isn't completely consumed in the next few minutes... Yeah, it won't be. Well, we should get there in time, especially since these can jump. I can't see in here right now because a space storm has just landed, which means I can't see into other systems. I'm not moving forward until I know where things are because I don't want to lose my entire fleet. We are getting really, really close now. Okay, can you just jump from there to there? Scourge down here, Scourge up there. I think I'll be able to save another world. Yes, I will. Since they don't take the station until the world is consumed, Research thankfully. Concluded. So I'll save that world there. I have another ground force slowly moving its way up, which should get there in time to save that. You've just been finished with that, so you can start following along with these. And our group is now stronger than ever, so yeah, they don't really stand a chance at this point, it's just a clean-up. This is probably the cleanest endgame crisis I've ever fought. Well, except for that one time when I was doing the Fnatic Purifiers, and I literally didn't let them get out of their starting zone, just because they got obliterated. But to be fair, that spawned much, much later as well. This is a very early run. So I think I've showcased that even though I didn't become hyper-aggressive at the start, which is definitely another way of playing this, you certainly have the resources to do so, and you can have way more worlds and probably a lot more tech than this. This is definitely up there as one of the most powerful empires. Don't know if it is the most powerful empire, like I said earlier, but definitely up there nonetheless. Excellent, I can make that jump. And I'll get there first. Because once you invade a planet, the jump gets reset. Ah, oh, no, there's a normal world there. Okay, that's a shame. I'm afraid you are going to have to stay back and bomb by- Oh, no, a fleet literally just spawned. Okay, where are you? Uh, no, I am losing this ground force. There's not much I can- Oh, no, no, it's moving away. It didn't spawn him. For some reason, I wasn't getting it, though. Uh, okay, guys, move back. I need you to deal with that. Deal with that, then continue. Yes. So it turns out fighting the Scourge in one of these storm territories is great. So I'm actually very happy the storm is here because it's slowing them down during the fight. And as you can see, they're not able to get in range of their weapons, which can get through our point defense. <laughs> that was one of the largest fleets I've seen for so far, but it just couldn't get through. How much damage did it actually do? A few acid blasts. It just about made it. Thank you, Storm. Thank you, game. Okay, gonna clear up the rest of this. Lovely. Ground force, can you please teleport here? It seems like they've grabbed a world. Any other worlds? Okay, already cleaned that one. Nope. Nope, that's being bombarded. Okay, there's a world I have to bombard there, and a world I have to bombard there, so I'm very glad I've got one million fleet power currently on the way. Where are they? How far did they get? There they are. We're now doing four times damage. Actually, no, doing more than that. We're getting plus 400%. No, am I wrong? No, I think it might be plus 300%. Am I right? Yes, yeah, plus 350% strike craft damage. That's it. So close. Research concluded. Concluded. Once again, that just looks insanely cool. So now it really is just the last little bits of cleanup. We're just taking up the last of the swarms over here. We're losing like one or two fleets at a time versus their larger fleets. That's fine. In fact, actually, we're losing fleets more often versus their smaller fleets, the ones which are completely covered in these things, the swarmlings. High-ish evasion. Occasionally we miss them. That's not really the big deal. It's the fact there's lots of them. They're quite fast, and then they have a lot of acid blast damage. Whereas the larger ones, more of their damage is coming from things like the missiles and, of course, the swarmers, which do absolutely nothing to us due to our copious amounts of point defense. But yeah, gonna clean up all this. We are just bombarding the last few worlds. Almost done. Annoyingly, someone here is trying to help. And by trying to help, they mean 
they're using the weaker bombardment, so we all have to use it. Oh, and you may notice that we have a few bits of swarm here, because at some point I got the Brood Queen. So I can make really weak little swarmlings when I want to. They don't really do all that much, but, you know, it's cool. Oh, wait, no, is that not mine? Is that theirs? That's theirs! Oh, they must have grabbed the queen, the injured queen. That's pretty cool. I thought I just mixed in the fleets. Yeah, we have more fleets ready as well. I'm just going to move all of these here. Get ready for the final push. The Great Tempest still, really? Ah, oh, well, thankfully they're so weak it doesn't really matter. Okay, that's the last construction vessel dealt with. There's just a world here which needs to be removed. And let's get all of our fleets then together for the final attack. Ooh, they might actually move out. Yep, it seems like they've spawned a new fleet. Oh, I didn't even consider that. As we were destroying the other worlds. Yeah, as we were destroying the other worlds, now they're only going to spawn here. That was a terrible place to meet. Um, What do I do? Do I back off or do I just try and fight it? We have one half a million fleas. Then a tiny backup fleet. Um, I don't know what to say here. Don't particularly want any of those. That'll do. No, we're going to move out. There's other reinforcements on the way as well, and together we could take out that fleet, so let's just try and get out of there. Might be better to jump. Yeah, one fleet on its own is fine. There's no construction, ve no construction vessels yet spawned in, so... Oh, please jump. Jump faster. Jump right now. Now, now, now. Go, go, go. Oh, come on. Move. Oh, wow. We actually even got a few shots off. Did it do much damage? No. <laughs> So this is our smaller fleet defending this territory because they are bringing ground forces. It's obviously a big problem for us. Don't want to have to deal with more infested worlds. Oh, they are getting close enough. We have so much armor now, it's insane. How much did we lose there, if at all? That was insane. I honestly expected to lose way more than that. There we lost two swarmlings, one battleship, one cruiser. Well done, little swarmlings. You're on the right side now. How much extra armor do we have? As you can probably tell by the influence stacking up, I have kind of got a bit lax now with uh, min-maxing everything, and micromanaging rather, just because it does take hours upon hours to sort out so many worlds, even in such a small territory, and we are pretty much guaranteed to win now. Our science is insane. We have basically plus 200% research speed as well. We're getting everything we need. So yeah, how much bonus armor? Plus 255%. Still, though. Lovely. I do want to send everything, though. So even though I think perhaps that group could stand there and just take a lot of damage. Concluded. I'm okay with waiting a little bit longer just to get everything together. Sure. This might end badly. There's two fleets versus what we've got here. And I honestly just want to see what happens. They outnumber us massively in this fight. We do, however, weirdly, this time have a Juggernaut. So our strike craft are a little bit more powerful. In fact, 20% stronger. Okay, they've got in range of the Acid Blasts. The strike craft, thankfully, don't mind how close the enemy are. Oh, we are losing a lot now. I think we're going to win, but it's going to be close. Wow, that was really close. Our fleets are finally almost here. Re and so begins the final fight. So many swarmlings in those groups. Maybe I should increase the tracking on the battleships. Maybe that will help. Thankfully, though, the strike craft have no such problems. Just look at that. And that is pretty much it. Uh, there's a tiny group over here. 
don't need to send all that much over, so just grab a group of you at random. Can you please all just be begin bombardment over here? This is the very last of their worlds. Once this is done, everything is truly, truly over. All glory to Lathrix the Derp, who I can't believe made it from the very start of this game, now age 215, is still here. And their poor, poor child, who's 189, who's still just the heir to the throne forever. <laughs> and so, after the last world was bombarded, at last, we have the end of the Scourge, and thus, the end of the run. So, let's have a quick talk about it then, because that was... Probably one of the more difficult in terms of micromanagement throughout the game, just trying to min-max things and everything and trying to learn how to do things more efficiently, but also probably something which didn't end up with all that much footage. It's at least 55 hours of recording at this point, probably about like an hour or, or an hour and a half worth of video, something like that. Let's go back to the main screen. I'm sick of looking at this map at this point. So what did I think then about the Galactic Lathruxian Empire? Did it fulfill my expectation as one of the meta builds, at least in single player? Honestly, yeah. I think I did make a few mistakes, though. I think relying on the Federation so much and just peace early on was a bit silly. Getting more worlds would have allowed us to just explode so much more in terms of tech once we got to that stage. Because we got to that stage and we just kept on snowballing and snowballing, that could have happened faster once it started if we just had more worlds and more territory. So I think maybe playing more aggressively early on might have been the way forwards. Now, sadly, we didn't get to see the contingency, which is kind of what I was hoping for, even if it was a little bit relieved when the Scourge spawned in, but after looking back at some footage from the last time I fought the Contingency on Times 25, it does seem like it still takes them a very long time to get through habitats, but they do split up a bit more so they can do it more effectively, but it still takes them a long time. By the point that the Endgame Crisis spawned in, we were just so well fortified, I honestly couldn't imagine anything getting through for tens of years. Maybe in ten years, probably a bit more, and we could always reinforce faster, and we had such a huge population growth, we could always send more and more populations to those fortress worlds, meaning it would take even longer for them to get through. Now, of course, after 50% devastation, the FTL in inhibitor does turn off, but there's loads of them. So they have to bombard them and keep them bombarded because devastation heals over time, actually decently quickly, after you stop bombarding a habitat. So, I don't think they would have got through, even if they would have attacked us directly, and I think they do specifically target the Empire with the highest synth population, which basically activates the event. Sadly, didn't get to see that, but out of all the Empires I've played, I think this Empire was the best prepared for it, and if we had a larger Empire, once again, I think it would have been more difficult to completely choke point off, but as long as we choke point the core, we could have been even better. So... I don't know what changes I would have made, honestly. Um, technocracy later on, I wish I swapped out a little bit earlier. I ended up swapping it out for, weirdly... Where is it? There it is, Aristocratic Elite. This gives you plus five stability on the planets, because that's what a noble does. And you can add more nobles, basically meaning almost all of my main worlds had 100 stability near the end, which was insanely good. So we had Police State, the Guilds, and Aristocratic Elite. I don't even know if that was the right choice, I just thought it'd be a bit of fun, and it certainly was. Now, the micromanagement was insane, but at the end I just kind of gave up because we had essentially won. I don't think choosing intelligent straight away is a good choice. That's one thing I would change for something else, because it hardly makes a difference that early on with such a little tech, and we could be getting something else. I mean, strong affects worker population, and that means the own populations would be affected by that, giving them plus 2.5 in everything, which would be really interesting. Um, charismatic would be amazing. Conformist to make sure the factions stay the course. There's a lot of things we could have gone here. Uh, maybe just adaptive. Or even thrifty, because of how much trade value we got. So that's the one thing I think I would change. Uh, solitary and unruly I think I would keep the same. And that's pretty much that. It was just insane. The rate they increased in tech and every resource was just off the charts. They could do pretty much whatever they wanted. And if you wanted to play this empire aggressively, you very easily could. The only reason I didn't is because I was scared of the endgame crisis and I wanted to fortify. Could have played it differently. Probably should have. Had a lot of fun though. So with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Stellaris is a series you wish to see continued in the future. In the next video, it will likely be either a impossible run or a modded run, unless... 
people would like to see perhaps a different attempt at a meta build. Maybe something I've came up with entirely by myself. Not too sure, because I did have a lot of fun with this. And I hope you did too, but now I'm going to go and have a rest before I edit almost 60 hours of footage and hate my voice more than I already do. Thank you so much for watching, have a lovely day, and do take care. Until next time, goodbye.